Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we will be covering the brand new ASUS Republic of Gamers G703GX. This particular laptop is going to be top of the line featuring the most powerful hardware currently available in a mobile gaming computer. The most predominant hardware that makes this top of the line is going to be the Core i9 CPU from Intel and the NVIDIA RTX 2080. Not the Max-Q edition, but the full-blown desktop edition. So we'll see when we get to our performance benchmarks how much power we get out of that type of hardware. Other important factors to take note of is the fact that we have a full-blown 17.3-inch screen diagonally. So we have a very large, nice screen to look at, which makes this very suitable for a desktop replacement. But it does mean with your day-to-day -day portability, you do have a little bit of a larger laptop to carry around. So with our major overview about the system out of the way, as far as the upfront information, let's continue on with our detailed review. The first thing we'll do is going to be unbox everything so you can see exactly what you'll get if you decide to buy one of these for yourself. So as you can see, the boxes are not very detailed. They're very plain flat black boxes. We do have the double box technique being used here. Once we have the internal box open, our laptop is pretty much right on top and ready to access. Once you get your laptop open, you're going to find an oversized cleaning cloth that you'll want to hold on to. That's very useful for keeping the screen clean. And the laptop itself doesn't look too flashy yet, but once we power it up, we'll see all the RGB backlit keyboard options. And we'll go ahead and set the laptop aside as we continue to go into our box. We do have a compartment on the right that is unused, so it just has filler material. And right next to that, in the second compartment, we're going to find one of our power adapters. Just like the other laptops we have reviewed that have the full-sized NVIDIA RTX 2080, this laptop does need two separate power adapters to provide enough power to run that type of hardware. And with the power adapters aside, there's only one more thing to dig out of the box, and then in the center, we're going to find a very small package that is going to have our warranty information, driver information, and of course, all the standard affair. Now with everything out of the box, let's circle back around to take a look at those power adapters. Again, we have two of these and each one of them puts out 20 volts and 14 amps for a total of 280 watts of power, which of course puts us at a total combined power of 560 watts. So if this is a laptop that you plan on carrying around with you every day, you're going to of course want to know how much it weighs. And it's at 10.1 pounds or 4.6 kilograms. And of course, you probably won't get too far without your power adapters. And that brings your total carry weight to 14.6 pounds or 6.6 .6 kilograms. So the next factor that's very important for the portability is going to be the size. So we do have some quarters here for our actual scale and a ruler for our measurements. We're close to about two inches of height on the back side and a little bit less than that on the front side, closer to one and three quarter inches. Overall, the size and weight of this laptop might not be too appealing if you have to carry it around a lot every day, but it's still much smaller and lighter than an equivalent desktop. Now let's talk a little bit about the dual power adapters for this laptop. Some of the other manufacturers require you to take the two power supplies and merge them together with a third piece of equipment. But ASUS has given you the ability to plug both of these directly into the laptop, so that makes it a little bit easier to manage and one less thing to carry around. Moving along into the next segment of our review, and we now have the laptop powered on, and you can see what it looks like in the regular operation. So the 17.3 inch diagonal measurement means we have plenty of space here for the keyboard, the touchpad, and to rest your hands. 
we do have the really nice screen. This is a 144 hertz refresh rate screen with a three millisecond response time. So it's definitely targeted for competitive gamers. Each and every one of the backlit keys has its own dedicated LED, so you get lots of color customization options. There's tons of presets in there, and of course you can use the software and go and program your own as well. To save you a little bit of time and trouble for hunting through software options or shortcuts on your desktop, we do have a couple of hotkeys for quick access. And of course we have a whole suite of software that's responsible for both giving you information about your system and giving you really cool ways to configure it. Also be sure not to forget that with all the high profile features this laptop has, we still have the standards like your HD webcam and integrated microphones. And another really neat thing is the fact that our screen is G-Sync compatible so that RTX 2080, no matter what frame rate it gives you, you're not gonna get any kind of tearing in your games. So we have our performance benchmarks right around the corner, but we have one more thing to do first and that's to check out our connectivity. Starting on the left hand side of the laptop, we have our wired network connectivity, that's RJ45. We have a USB 3.1 Type-C port that also has Thunderbolt built in, a USB 3.0 port, and our two 3.5 millimeter audio connections. One of those is going to be for a microphone input and one for your headphone output. Over to the back hand side, we do have some connectivity back here. We of course have the two power adapter ports that we saw earlier for charging your laptop and running off of mains power. And we have a mini display port and an HDMI output. And finally, as we get to the right hand side of the laptop, in the very back, we have our Kensington lock port. Then we have two more type A standard USB 3.0 ports. And then we have an SD card reader. With all of the outside pieces and parts now covered, here's one last look at the laptop as far as the colors, the shape and the form factor before we go into the operating system and start our benchmarks. So you undoubtedly already know about the high-end hardware in the laptop, but of course here you can go and see it for yourself in the device manager. The Core i9-8950HK is a tremendously powerful CPU and it's paired with the full-blown NVIDIA RTX 2080, so the best two pieces you can get right now. The screen is 1920 by 1080p with a 144 hertz refresh rate and three millisecond response time, definitely targeted for gamers. So as we're about to move into the benchmark section of the review, we need to get our baselines before we start testing. Currently with a non-loaded state, we're about 65 degrees Celsius on our CPU and much cooler, only 39 degrees Celsius on the video card. Now to get the temperature readings for the stuff you can't get from your system, here is going to be an external infrared camera. And now we can see what's going on with the rest of the heat zones. What we're looking for here is going to be a nice cool to the touch area for where the hands are going to be. It looks like with all that extra real estate afforded by the larger laptop size, that it's nice and cool where your hands would rest. Near the intake and exhaust vents, we're going to see some higher readings. You can actually see where the table itself is even getting heated up a little bit. Don't think that it's a bad thing when you see a lot of heat coming out of the laptop or high readings because that means the laptop is getting rid of the heat and that's a good thing. As far as how to best evaluate these temperatures, the best thing to do is to take a look at some of the other reviews with systems that are similar to this one and compare them between each other and then you'll know which one is doing better or worse. So the last baseline we need to capture before we start our benchmarks is going to be our noise levels. This of course can be very important depending on your environment. Right now, not under load, we're about 26 decibels as far as where the side exhaust is. Moving it over to the rear of the laptop shows pretty much exactly the same. And on the other side of the laptop, we're also looking at more or less the same sound.
With our benchmarks now underway, it's time to go back and check some of our baselines and see how they've changed. Here you can see the sound levels have ramped up quite considerably, almost 76 decibels on the left exhaust. As we go to the back to retest, it's actually a little bit quieter on the back and that might be due to the shape and size of the exhaust vents forcing the air a little bit faster out the side. And over on the other side of the laptop, the readings look like they're a little bit quieter over here and that could be how the fans independently spin up depending on which side of the laptop is being cooled with the CPU or the GPU. Now we're also going to go back and check the infrared camera and see how the temperatures have changed here. We still see the hand area is nice and cool to the touch, so nothing bad has happened there. You can see the heat is being thrown out of the system quite considerably harder than before. The entire tabletop surface is just covered in the heat. And you can just see the heat's being thrown out of both sides of the laptop, so it's definitely getting a lot of the hot air out of the system and hopefully keeping those components nice and cool. Now for that great moment of truth while we check in and see what kind of scores we got. Our temperatures show that the CPU got all the way up to on the highest core 100 degrees Celsius. The GPU stayed nice and cool at only 72 degrees Celsius. Now this monstrous Core i9 CPU gets really toasty in every laptop we've tested but it's still within the normal range of temperatures. Now as far as our performance scores, 21,670 on Firestrike is an amazing score and definitely something to be compared to even full-blown desktop systems. Now we're not quite done yet, we have a couple more benchmarks to run, so here's Cinebench R15. With that finished rendering, we come in with a score of 115.49 frames per second. And we have a 1546 Cinebench score. And here is going to be a quick test of the speaker system. Now it's time for us to move into the last segment of our review today, and that's going to be our system disassembly. So we have some really good news here, and that's that ASUS went with a very smart system design to make this easy for you to get access. Just one single screw lets the bay door open up and come right off, and this gives you access immediately to all of the user upgradable components. So we have an M2 SSD already occupied on the left, right next to our 2.5 inch mechanical storage drive. Over on the right hand side, there's a slot for two more M2 SSDs that you can upgrade, and in the center, two RAM slots that you can upgrade. So you only have four screws that you need to remove to get the plate off of where the extra two SSDs can be installed. So that's a very easy upgrade to do. At this point, we're leaving user upgrade land and going into a detailed system disassembly, so we had to remove many, many, many more screws. 
And actually at this point, we have to take the back plate off for where the hinges are. And this will allow us to take the entire bottom panel of the laptop off. So as we just mentioned, there's no actual good reason to take the system apart to this level because there's no upgradable parts beyond the ones that are easy to get to. But we're gonna definitely take it apart for you just for the sake of our video. So now we can see the nice red PCB, nice and easy. The very large and intricate array of cooling pipes and our large cooling fans. And of course, we'll pull that up here in a moment because our GPU and CPU are underneath of that. Here's an up close look at those PCIe SSD slots with the M2 form factor and our system battery. So the next major part of disassembly was removing all the screws necessary to get the cooling solution up. Now you can see the thermal paste and all the thermal pads, and you get actual access to the CPU and GPU. We also went the extra mile and took the battery off of the system, and it's good news to know that if you really needed to, this battery would be replaceable after the laptop has aged several years. Now at this level of disassembly, our review is actually going to be complete. If you were here to learn something about this laptop to see if you were interested in getting it, we hope that the video was able to answer your questions. And if you just stumbled across it and thought it was a neat video, we hope you enjoyed it. Of course, the next step to take now is to go ahead and check out the video description and find the product page link and click on that. And that'll take you to our product page with the current pricing and availability and the full system specs for the system. Now, if you had any questions that were not answered by the video, feel free to ask those down below in the comment section. We'll be happy to answer those questions for you and everybody else. And also, please do not hesitate to contact us by phone or email if you ever need some personalized one-on-one -on -one help. So once again, we just want to remind everybody this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.